how the heck do you base a mini? Hello Internet, welcome to Base Theory, the show where I teach you a thing or two about what to put between your miniature's feet and its lovely plastic base. And stay tuned till the end of this video to see a montage of painted minis courtesy of the EOB Complete community. Basing is essentially creating a tiny diorama for your model to stand in. Your model is painted as if it exists in a time and place, and the base helps tell that story. It can be simple or elaborate, but it helps to create the world of your model. So what do I know about basing? Well, I don't want to brag, but I've made one or two basing videos. Or 80. In these videos, I try to keep things really simple. I think any of these bases would make a great scheme for an entire army. But in these dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of videos, I talk about how to base, but never explain the why of it all. In this video, I want to go into detail on my basing theory and my strategies for basing miniatures, because there's actually quite a bit to it. Once this video is over, you will be an expert on basing miniatures. So how do you base a miniature? Well, the first thing first is to put it on a base, and even this can be trickier than you might think. When I first got into the hobby, my instincts were to center the model's feet with the center of the base. And this was an easy mistake to make because most models barely fit on the 25mm base that was the norm back in the day. But now with the much more reasonably sized 32mm base becoming the standard, there is more wiggle room to play with. Let me demonstrate with this sniper guy. If I put him right in the middle of the base, he looks great, but now most of his gun hangs over the edge of the base, and that's no good for gaming. But if I scoot him back further, now almost none of the gun is sticking out and it frees up a nice amount of room on the base to do something fun with. You do want the model centered, but with as little overhang as possible. You want to minimize things sticking out wherever possible because a lot of overhang makes the model very unwieldy for gaming and it'll catch on other models and tip over all the time. Now on to making bases, and it's really impossible to make a video discussing everything about basing because there are an infinite number of basing schemes out there and they all need different materials. Like different types of glues, sands of various grit, Rocks, cat litter, putty, more putty, crackle medium, fine grain sand, creative juices, and all that stuff is really dependent on exactly what you're doing and is explained perfectly in the individual basing videos. What I want to get into here and now is the strategies to follow when trying to come up with a basing scheme. Now you have a mini, but what is he standing on? One thing that helps me is to think about the lore. What is the story of the miniature? I almost always base models last, so I have a finished model to look at when I need to answer that question. Does this model live in a forest? Is it somewhere dirty? Is he upper class or a vagrant? This really helps me come up with a plan. Typically, your miniature base will fall into one of two categories, natural or artificial. Natural will be your forests, deserts, snowy mountains. These will be a little slice out of a landscape painting. Natural bases are by far the most common. No matter if your minis are high fantasy or grim sci-fi, you see most minis marching through untouched picturesque landscapes because natural bases are a lot easier. Now, if you're going to base your miniatures in a natural setting, do it right. Don't just take a flat base and add a rock or a tuft of grass. It's one of my biggest hobby pet peeves is the flat as a pancake base. It don't make no sense. Real nature has curves. And to me, no natural base is complete without some sort of elevation. I always put a little something in between the flat base and the sand or flock to give my base a more natural look. When you look at real earth, you see everything is some form of peaks and valleys. You could think of this a little bit like every model having its own pitcher's mound. And you might think that would look horrible, but it doesn't. It looks great. It also gives you more base to look at and make sure that even if your mini is looked at from dead on, there will still be a little bit of base poking out. I know I'm really drilling into this, but if you have one takeaway from this video, I want it to be this. You might be asking, well, why would every model be on a slight hill? And I would counter with, why would every model be on a super flat parking lot with a little bit of gravel thrown on top? Now I have three favorite ways of adding this elevation, and that is kitty litter and super glue, Crayola model magic soft squishy modeling material, and original Gorilla Glue. Cat litter and super glue is great when you want to bust out one base because it dries instantaneously. I do this a lot with single characters. It gives me a lot of control. You can sprinkle on some grains of cat litter, stick them down in place with super glue, and then add a bit more. Crayola Model Magic Soft Squishy Modeling Material is cheap and awesome. It is foam clay. You pull off pieces of it, press them down onto the base, and then super glue them down. Now it does take eight hours to dry, but it's sturdy enough that you can go ahead and add your sand and flock. Just don't put a model on top until it's dry. Original Gorilla Glue is my favorite because it's the easiest. You squeeze on a drop or two, let it alone to foam up, and then you're ready to base. 
No thought required. It does all the work of creating interesting random shapes by itself. The only downside is you need to let it harden overnight. But that's no big deal anyway because models take so long to finish. Once you have that natural irregular earth goodness, you are in a prime spot to add your sand, flock, pigments, resins, or whatever you need to create that awesome natural base. At this point, I usually add sand, and I wish I had a smoking gun magic bullet for this, but I haven't found a product that I really like. My sand comes in three types, fine, medium, and small pebbles. I got this by sifting construction sand through a kitchen mesh strainer and then a fine mesh tea strainer. I have had success with beach sand, but whenever I buy sand, it usually comes graded and is 100% uniform grains that look completely unnatural on a model's base. However you come by your sand is your business, and a little goes a long way. Two cups of sand will probably last you the rest of your wargaming life. But when you do glue it down to a model, I recommend wood glue over white glue. Wood glue has tougher resins in it and does not evaporate as much as Elmer's glue, so whatever it looks like wet is how it's going to look dry. Now that is how I would tackle natural bases. Artificial bases are things like roads, mechanical factories, and flooring. With these, you're not trying to replicate nature, but man-made stuff in a microscopic scale. Usually, this comes down to clever use of materials. To do this, I find that usually I'll be wandering around the aisles of an arts and crafts store or a hardware store and analyzing the stuff. Things like plastic fasteners, sandpapers, zip ties can look great as generic mechanical doodads. You want the base to look like a hole punched out of the deck of a submarine, or the aged wood flooring of a theater stage. These bases are usually a lot more involved and take more steps, but can look a lot better. It gives you the opportunity to add more things to the model, more points of opportunity, like this old pipe or some elevated flooring. Your models are wandering through city streets or an abandoned factory. These bases are harder to make, but I think it's worth it to have a more interesting product. And speaking of a more interesting product, have you ever thought of putting magnets in your bases to make transportation a breeze? Well, you don't have to worry about sourcing bases or finding just the right size of magnet, Cobalt Keep has you covered. They make high quality bases in all the typical wargaming sizes you need. They even have oddball stuff like the 60mm cavalry oval and round lift bases. All their bases come with a built-in slot for a nice strong magnet that the bases are sold with or without. And their magnetic paint handles, which come in a big and small size, work perfectly to hold Cobalt Keep bases. They stick with a very satisfying clink. And Cobalt Keep took their handles one step further by providing sturdy bases for the handles to rest on during painting downtime so they cannot be knocked over. Magnetic bases are the perfect way to transport your minis in style. No more risking snapping off swords by shoving them in a foam case or chipping paint by letting them clink around in a shoebox. Having your models magnetically lock into place is the best way to store and move your models and they look cool while you do it. From now until June 7th, shop with the code EOB15 to get 15% off your order of bases, painting handles, and project boxes from Cobalt Keep. Now you have your bases and it's ready to rock, but that's only half the battle. Now it's time to paint it. What I have learned from painting hundreds of bases is that painting bases is actually pretty fun. Painting bases is the perfect time to try out some things like wet blending, dry brushing, and washes. You don't have to be neat, you don't have to be tidy, just slap the paint on, pick your colors, and push them around. And speaking of picking colors, one thing that I've found is that picking the correct color is absolutely crucial. You have to take into account the color the model is, and then paint the base to complement or contrast so the model is accented. I made a big mistake back in my early hobby days with my neck runs. I painted them with white bodies and light blue energy, then I put them on a white snow base. No good, white on white on light blue accent means the model looked boring. A good rule of thumb is if you have a very dark mini, it'll look great on a light colored base and a light mini will pop on a dark base. This is a good rule to follow, but I have also found success by picking accent colors from the model and bringing them down onto the base. Like with my new Necrons. They have the same white body, but now with orange weapons. So I based with a similar orange color. This can work really well, especially if you want to keep things to a limited palette. And now comes the most divisive part of the video. What color should you paint the rim of the base? Well, there is much debate on that issue. Usually I would say paint it black. It's the standard, it's essentially just meant to be ignored, it's a black void. It looks smart and it'll not draw attention away from the model. But I also like colors too. I'm not one of those only black rims or you're doing it wrong painters. Sure, a black rim is kind of the agreed upon standard, but who cares? It's not like a black base rim will make your snow bases look good on a lava game board. I like a little color. It can help a model stand out, it can differentiate armies, and can be another fun area to experiment with. Like on this Fallout Nuka-Cola girl, whose base I painted red, white, and dirty. Have fun with it and don't let anybody stop you. One thing that has been cooking my noodle as of late is, is the age of the homemade base over? With so many little companies making resin bases, 
the big boys like Games Workshop and Fantasy Flight making their own plastic bases, pre-decorated bases for sale, and resin printing making custom bases and basing toppers simple and easy to obtain, what is the future of homemade basing? I don't really know. It sounds a little grim when I put it like that, but I actually think homemade will live on. Painting miniatures is really just arts and crafts time, and people want that feeling of, I did a thing. Once there was nothing, but now there is something. There is a particular creative satisfaction that comes with figuring out a new use for a thing. Pre-made bases are still pricey, and 3D printers are still a great big pain in the butt, and all these models are still sold with bases. Blank bases, ready for you to rub your creative juices all over. Oh, and don't glue pennies or washers at the bottom of a base. People do this to give the model weight. Plastic models have a chance of surviving a drop or two because they're almost weightless. But if you add a big heavy weight, you are tripling your chances of something cracking. So do you have to base your miniatures? Yes, yes you do. It's the law, if you don't base your miniatures, you will go to jail. With that said, there is an argument to be made for clear bases. They will look good on any game board, are super easy, and they will go well with any paint job. Clear bases, get a thumbs up. We make a lot of videos and some of them are even about stuff other than basing. And if you want to help support us making these videos, the best way to do so is by joining our Patreon. Over there you'll gain access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live on YouTube, and a hobby hangout live stream every Friday night. So I hope I've explained base as well, and I hope that I never see an unbased mini ever again. Remember, the model isn't done until it's based. Now with that out of the way, it's time for the real highlight of this video, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Tau Resting Sniper by Cree Chaos, some Tyranids by Lemirius, a Dread Knight by Memphis Minis, a Curse City Hero by Fax Painter, a Mortarian by Effecto Gatillo, a Skaven Warrior by Dire Hobby Painting, a Librarian by Robert J. Bailey, a Jump Chaplain by Fu93, a Tau Drone by Lennox Miniatures, a Terminator by Muckle, a Smash Captain by Sonichu is Real, a Great Unclean One by The Real Mike, a Couple Dwarves by Dwarven, a Primaris Chapter Ancient by Elakas Yelfer, a Skaven Trebuchet by Johnny Rock 84 a Space Marine by Vega Wesky, a Custodes Captain by Existential Vein Sellant, a Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought by Chris Carnage, a Rubric Marine by Disco, a Space Marine Dreadnought by Just Make Stuff, a Primaris Chaplain by Mega Slade, a Big Space Marine by Wolfstring, and a Snowy Space Marine by Change My Name So It's Easier For Jay. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing. 